This is part 15 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss Bootstrap button classes. Bootstrap button classes can be used on any of these elements. We can use them on an anchor element, button element, input type equals button, and input type equals submit. Let's look at an example now. On this page right here, we have a button element, input type equals button, and input type equals submit. At the moment, we haven't applied any of the bootstrap classes on these three elements. So if we view this page in the browser, this is how those three buttons look like. Notice at the moment they're using browser defaults. Let's now apply one of the bootstrap button classes, which is btn, on all these three elements and see what we get. Let's apply this button class on the rest of the two elements, that is input type equals button and input type equals submit. Notice the styles of the buttons now with that BTN class applied. In addition to the BTN class, Bootstrap also has few other button classes as you can see here. We have BTN default, BTN primary, etc. Let's use these classes in an example and see what we get. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here is an example that's making use of all the classes that we have just seen on the slide. Notice we have buttons here. And in addition to the BTN class, we're using all those classes that we have seen on the slide. BTN default, BTN primary, etc. Let's save these changes. And when we reload the page, notice the look and feel of the button. Depending on the class that we are using, we get a different look and feel. This is the button on which we have applied BTN default class. This is the button with BTN primary class, so on and so forth. Look at this button especially. On this button, we have applied this class BTN link. This is going to display the button as if it's a hyperlink, but the behavior is still going to be the button behavior. So let's look at when we actually use these classes. So if you want a standard button, you use BTN default class. This BTN primary indicates the primary actions in a set of buttons. BTN success indicates a successful, a positive action. BTN info indicates a button for informational alert messages. BTN warning indicates caution should be taken with this action. BTN danger indicates a dangerous or potentially negative action. BTN link de-emphasizes a button by making it look like a link while maintaining button behavior. Button classes can also be used on an anchor element. Let's use these button classes with an anchor element and see what we get. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here we have an anchor element. Notice at the moment we are not using any of the button classes. By default, this is how the hyperlink element is styled. Let's apply one of the button classes. Let's first apply the BTN class and see what we get. So with the BTN class applied, this is how the hyperlink is styled. There is a small difference in its style. In addition to the BTN class, let's apply one of these button classes. Let's apply BTN primary class. So in addition to the BTN class, I am also applying BTN primary class. So with BTN primary class applied, notice the hyperlink element is now styled as a button element, but the behavior is still going to be that of a hyperlink. Let's now discuss creating buttons with different sizes. In Bootstrap, we have got three different classes for that purpose. To create a large button like this, use button LG class. For a small button, button SM, and for extra small button, button XS. Let's look at an example. Here, we have three buttons with those three classes applied, button LG, SM, and XS. When we reload this page, we get the buttons with those three different sizes as expected. To create a button that span the full width of its parent, use btn block class. Let's understand this with an example. I'm going to replace this selected HTML with another piece of HTML. Notice here we've got four div elements. And on each of the div elements, we're using these four grid classes, call LG, MD, SM, and XS. We discussed these classes with examples in one of our previous videos in this series. What these classes are going to do is, on a large screen size, we are going to get four columns per row. And on a medium screen size, three columns per row. And on a small screen size, two columns per row. And on an extra small screen size, only one column per row. 
and within each development we have another nested development and on that development we're using this custom div class and if you look at what this custom div class is doing it's setting padding to 10 pixels and width to 100 percent and then inside the div element we've got a button element and on that button element we're using btn and btn primary classes so let's save these changes and reload this page at the moment we are on a large screen size so we see four columns and within each column we have a button displayed side by side and on a medium screen size notice we have three buttons on a small screen size two buttons and on an extra small screen size in a one button per row but then notice the width of the buttons in all the screen sizes the width of the button is fixed now what we want to do is make the width of the button span you know to the full width of its parent in this case the parent of this button is this development and this development width is 100 percent meaning you know it is occupying the full width of its parent in this case you know the column that we have here so depending on the screen size that we are viewing you know this HTML and depending on the width of the column we want the button also to span to that width we can very easily achieve that by applying btn block class on each of these buttons so let's do that now so along with btn and btn primary classes I'm going to apply btn block class as well let's do that for all the button elements let's do it for button 3 and finally for button 4 let's save our changes and reload this page notice now the width of the button you know is spanning across the full width of its parent so at the moment we are on a large screen size let's reduce the size to a medium screen size again look at the buttons their size is changing depending on the width of its parent and on an extra small screen size look at the width of these buttons to disable a button set the disabled attribute of the button to disabled let's look at an example here we have a button and we have set the disabled attribute of the button to disable let's save the changes reload this page notice this is a disabled button when I move the mouse over this button look at the cursor style it changes to a stop sign indicating that this button cannot be clicked to disable a hyperlink use disabled class let's look at an example here we have a hyperlink with btn and btn primary classes applied when we reload this page we get a hyperlink styled as a button we want this hyperlink to be disabled to do that all we have to do is apply disabled class notice now we get that hyperlink disabled Thank you for listening and have a great day.